Oh, I forgot. Why is this a thing? If you have ever traveled somewhere around the world, usually across continents, then you have probably run into the issue of how not every country uses the same plugs. For instance, the plugs back in North America look like this, but here in Europe, at least on most of the mainland, they look like this. So why do other countries do this? Can't we all just agree on one plug type to rule them all? Around the world, plug types are organized into different letter types, so at least one thing makes some sort of sense. The plugs to know about are types A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, and N. One thing you may have noticed is that a lot of these plugs are very similar to each other, like North America's AB plugs and Europe's CEF plugs. So confusing these shouldn't be too much of a problem, but that's about where the convenience ends. What would be a problem though is mixing up the frequencies of the plugs. No, traveling isn't as simple as just putting an adapter on something, I mean, you also need, like, plane tickets and a passport and stuff like that. You see, outlets in some countries will put out electricity at a different voltage and frequency than others. In North America, it's 110 volts at 60 hertz, but in Europe, it's 220 to 240 volts at 50 hertz. Fortunately, many products these days are being adapted in advance to deal with this. For instance, this charging block from my MacBook Pro, which says that it can handle anything from 100 to 240 volts at 50 to 60 hertz, which means that everything was fine with skipping the pond, and all I really needed to do was buy this traveler set for 41 bucks at Best Buy, full of a bunch of little plugs that I can simply remove and replace. So just read the tiny print on your device and research about what country you're in and you should be fine. This isn't true for everything though, most famously your hair dryer. Right, so I have this hair dryer cord right here and I put it through a European adapter, but it still can't handle the frequencies of the European power grid. So if we plug it in right here, this is what happens. Well, okay, that's not really what happened, but I think you get the point. Okay, so why do different countries do this? Wouldn't it be easier to just use one plug? Well, yeah, in an ideal world, but we don't live in an ideal world. We live in a world with different driving sites, currencies, government types, passport colors, writing systems, and brands of Burger King. The thing to understand about the whole different frequencies thing, really, is that it is ingrained into the buildings in different countries. So trying to change it isn't as simple as just flipping a switch somewhere. This is important as the reason why countries started to use different plug types in the first place is simply because standardization came too late. In the beginning of electricity, everything was just connected to the grid, but then people started wanting to use more portable tools and so needed sockets to plug them into the system occasionally. The reason for the voltage split was largely due to the infamous rivalry between Thomas Edison and Nikola Tesla, and the whole direct current versus alternating current thing and different electrical companies around the world picked and chose which one they saw the most fit. In the 30s, people set up a committee to standardize these newfangled plugs, but unfortunately this was also at a time when another committee decided to exterminate other committees of people they didn't like, and so some other people set up a committee to dissolve the murdery committee. And that was the story of how I just described World War II as a squabble between a bunch of committees. Oh yeah, and the first committee's discussions had to be put on hold until the 50s, which made it a bit too late to standardize the plugs. The thing is that every country's grid has its own frequency, and therefore requires a different shape of its power outlets for different uses, most notably with earth or ground pins in type B and type G plugs, which can help divert electricity away in case of a serious electrical failure, so you don't electrocute yourself. Unfortunately, there doesn't seem to be much of an easy way to standardize all the plugs, so it's really best to just bring an adapter and leave your hair dryer behind. Thank you for watching this video, and if you enjoyed it, please be sure to give it a like and share it so more people can know just why they have to get different plugs when they travel overseas. Also, be sure to follow me on Twitter at Canoes for more announcements and other random thoughts. And be sure to subscribe to learn something new every Sunday.